Hello again. Hello everybody. Uh, I'm here with uh, the continuation of the video or the two videos that I've had on the uh, uh, multi-degree freedom system and in particular a two-degree freedom system such as this one here. So this as you know is a two degree of freedom. So I've already shown you in the previous two videos how to um, uh, get the free body diagram of the system for mass one and mass two and then get the differential equation and then if we plug in the uh, given masses and st stiffness uh, you guys recall that you got the two differential equations the two couple, couple differential equations um, and then also we uh, got the uh, we put it in the matrix form we got the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix and then we said that in order to get the natural frequencies and the mode shapes uh, we have to set the determinant of this uh, matrix minus m matrix times omega squared plus k matrix equal to zero and you guys have seen in the uh, the, uh, the videos how uh, this is done uh, so especially the one that uh, on the light board uh, version so now uh, you guys recall that we got the um, the natural frequencies uh, mathematically we get plus and minus root two and so that's one frequency uh, but actually the magnitude is just root two and that gave us the mode shape of one and three. Remember, these are just ratios, uh, basically. And I mentioned in the video what they mean, really. Um, so, for example, if uh, you, for the first frequency, root two per, uh, radians per second, you have a uh, mode shape of one and three, what that means that if you move the mass one, uh, one unit, whatever, one centimeter, one meter to the right or to the left, and then move the second mass three times that unit in the same direction that you moved mass one. Then the system will only uh, oscillate at this frequency and the other frequency would disappear. And I will prove it to you in, in a minute uh, uh, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so now what I want to show you is a complete solution. So in other words, now that we have the uh, the natural frequencies and the mode shapes, the two mode shapes. Remember, natural frequencies are called eigenvalues, right? And mode shapes, these mode shapes are known as eigenvectors. Just some terminologies. Okay, so the question is now, if you have some initial conditions, so in other words, at t called zero, for example, if uh, mass one is moved two centimeters so this is just an arbitrary number I picked and uh, mass one is moved two centimeters and the mass two remains a stationary and then they don't have any initial velocity so these are the initial velocities for mass one and mass two then can we find the position of mass one and position of mass two as a function of time x1 of t and x2 of t that's what we want to do so let me show you that actually it turns out that the solution has to be a sine wave, a combination of the two frequencies, omega 1 and omega 2. So we have some constant A1. So what I have here in red, by the way, A1 and phi 1 and A2 and phi 2, right, are the constants that we have to determine. But remember, this is actually a vector equation. So you have this multiplied by the first mode shape, right? So actually, let me show you what I mean by that. So actually, if I erase this for you and if I... Actually, we are missing a U2 here, um, right? So there was a U1 here and a U2 here. So what I want to do now, I want to erase them again, right? And then I'm going to put the U1 here, see, 1 and 3, so you could see what's going on. And the U2 here, 1 and negative 3. So now go ahead and make a matrix, um, you know, uh, get the two equations. So, and remember, this is basically this guy here is x1 of t and x2 of t. It's a vector. So, go ahead. x1 is a1 times 1. So, that's a1 sine root 2 omega 1. Remember, is root 2t plus phi 1 plus a2 times 1 sine 2t omega 2 is 2t, right? Plus phi 2. And then similarly, a1 sine root 2t times 3, so that's 3a1, and then a2 times negative 3 gives you minus 3a2, right? 
So these are the two equations that we have. So now our objectives are to find a1, a2, phi1, and phi2. And I put them in red here to emphasize that these are the unknowns. So in other words, in a way, the amplitude and the phase angles. Okay, so let's go to the next page now. And what I need, of course, for the initial conditions that I have here are uh, the, uh, the derivative of these, or velocity of mass 1 and mass 2. So I went and I took the derivative of the two equations. So basically, uh, this uh, argument root 2 comes here in the front, and 2 comes here, right? And so on. So you have, actually, this is positive. That's an, another mistake, guys. Let me fix that. So, um, let's go ahead and put the first initial condition, uh, the initial condition in terms of velocity. So at t equals zero, uh, x1 dot is zero, and x2 dot is zero. So if we put t equals zero, this becomes just cosine phi1, and this becomes cosine phi2 because t is zero, right? So we get root 2a1 cosine phi1 plus 2a2 cosine phi2, and then similarly the same thing, 3a root uh, 3 root 2 a1 cosine phi1, and then this expression, uh, oops, so many mistakes I see here, Ooh. sorry guys, so this is actually, let me actually erase this for you, cosine phi2, here we go, equals zero. So go ahead and uh, try to, uh, you know, solve this system of uh, equations, linear equations. So if you actually multiply the first equation by 3, notice that 3 times 2 becomes 6, and then when you add these two, 6 and negative 6 cancel. Therefore, you end up adding 3 root 2 uh, plus 3 root 2, you get 6 root 2 a1 cosine phi1. If you don't want a1 to be 0, so you have to say cosine phi1 equals 0, cosine phi1 equals 0, and what does that mean? That means that what cosine of what angle is equal to zero? Obviously, 90 degrees. So you could show that both phi1 and phi2 are equal to 90 degrees. In fact, guys, remember this. If your initial conditions for any number of degree of freedom, actually, for velocity is zero, the phase angles are always equal to 90 degrees. Remember that. So you really don't have to really prove this. Uh, well, I proved it here to you, but if that's the case and the initial velocities are zero, then the phase angles must be 90 degrees. Now, go ahead and uh, rewrite the equations from this page, right? These equations that we have here, and make sure now you put uh, phi1 equal to uh, 90 degrees and phi2 equal 90 degrees, right? And now apply the initial conditions on the displacement, the positions. So x1 at t equals 0 is 2. So we get 2 equal to a1 sine phi1 plus a2 sine phi2 because time is 0, right? And same thing here in the equation. But remember, these are 90 degrees. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is what? Equal to 1. So eventually we get a1 plus a2 equal to 2, right? a1 plus a2 equal to 2. And then 3a1 uh, minus 3a2 equals 0. Try to solve this now. So multiply the first equation by 3, so then this becomes 3a1 and these two cancel. So we end up getting 6a1, add the 2, 6a1 equal 3 times 2 becomes 6 here. Remember, you multiply the 3 by everything, right? So a1 becomes 1, therefore uh, a2 must be equal to, let me see, a2 becomes also 1. Wow. Because remember, a1 plus a2 must be equal to 2. Remember, a1 plus a2 must be equal to 2. Therefore, if a1 is 1, a2 is 1 also. All right, go ahead and plug them in. a1, a2, and that's what you get. You have the frequencies and the phase angles here. But remember, Sine of an angle plus 90 degrees is the cosine of the angle. So I kind of simplified them uh, and put them in the cosine form. Okay? So remember, the initial conditions that we had was arbitrary. Now I want to show you on the last page, what if the initial condition was the mode shape? 
And I'm, in particular, I'm going to show you this first mode shape. Okay, let's go to the last page. What if we use the mode shape as initial conditions, right? As initial conditions. So what mode shape I want to use? I want to use the first mode shape. What does that mean? That means if at t equals 0, uh, x1 is 1. So in other words, move mass 1, 1 unit to the right, and then move mass 2, 3 units to the right, three, ta 3 times that to the right, or to the left. If you move them to the left, the same story. And um, what happens then? And by the way, as I said, so x1 uh, dot and x2 dot are equal to 0, which means phi1 is equal to 90 degrees and phi2 equal to 90 degrees. So that hasn't changed, right? So you already have the equations developed here. Remember we had a1 plus a2 equal uh, the displacement. So a1 plus a2 becomes this first, right? Displacement x1. And 3a1 minus 3a2 becomes 3. Right? Solve this one now. Solve this one and you end up getting a1 equal to 1 and a2 equal to 0. So look what happened. a2 is wiped out now. If a2 is gone, that means your system only oscillating at frequency of root 2. And that's exactly what I said at the beginning of this uh, video. Right? So... By the way, again, because the angle is 90 degrees, sine of an angle plus 90 degree becomes cosine. So here we go. So you see, system is only, system is oscillating only at frequency of root 2. Guess what? If now you change your mode shapes to uh, or your, uh, you use the second mode shape as your initial condition, which was 1 and negative 3. And I was, you say, at t equals 0, x1 is 1 and x2 is negative 3. Meaning that move mass 1, 1, but move mass 2, 3 units to the left, right? Then what happens, your a1 becomes 0 and a2 becomes something. I don't know. Uh, you, can, you can do it exactly like what you have here. So basically you just set this equal to one and you set this equal to negative three and then redo it. Anyways, and that means that your first frequency, your A1 is gone and then the system will only oscillate and the second frequency. I hope I haven't uh, confused you. I'll come back with uh, a different method, which is basically the Laplace. How could we solve this system of different differential equation by Laplace? So that would be the next thing. As always, thank you for watching and listening.